Hey guys and welcome to my video. In this video, I'll explain a simple method to determine damage in fiber reinforced laminates when subjected to tensile loading. So basically, fiber reinforced laminates have brittle behavior under tensile load, especially those reinforced with carbon fibers. Also, as you can see it here in this picture, they exhibit elastic behavior until the failure point. Therefore, a simple method for including failure is to use degrading coefficients in the material matrix or the Jacobian matrix, also known as DDSCDE matrix in the UMAT. Nonetheless, we need a criterion to specifically determine the beginning of the failure. For this purpose, we can use the Sai Wu criterion or Hashing criterion and etc. Now, let's review the code which I've written before. Continuing with the UMAT, this is the UMAT header, we can find it in Abacus documentation, then some dimensions. First, we have elastic constants to form the Jacobian matrix and the Jacobian matrix itself. The highlighted part is the degrading coefficient, which I will explain later. Then the new stress vector. Until here, we are completely familiar with the procedure. Here, I incorporated the Sai-Wu criterion with two uh, failure modes, the tensile failure and the shear dominant failure. At the next step, we have an if condition to see whether the stresses reach the maximum failure point or not. If so, the state widths are set to 0 0.9, meaning that 90% of the elasticity is lost. Finally, these states widths are incorporated in the Jacobian matrix, as you can see it here. Note that if your model is complex, this type of damage will result in numerical instabilities. Therefore, I recommend a linear degradation. Now, let's see an example. Here, I have a laminate with one millimeter thickness. Let me show you the material properties. First, the density. Then I have one dependent variable, also the mechanical constants. You can find it in your material brochure or on the internet. Then the static general step with the incrementation as here. Also make sure that you tick the STVs to show you the solution dependent state variables. For the loading, I've used a combination of tensile and shear loading. For meshing, I've used a full integration C3D8 elements. So let's submit the job. So, as I said before, we might encounter convergence problems. Let's review the results. If I get the reaction forces, I can see that there is a sudden drop in reaction forces which causes the convergence problem. This is similar to what happens in practice. So this concludes our video. If you find this video assistive, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. Take care.